Hello Aries friends, I'm Annie Botticelli. Welcome to my December 2019 horoscope report for you. At the time of the year when the planets are moving through Sagittarius, it's an especially vibrant and beautiful bright time for Aries because all of those Sag placements make amazing aspects with your Aries placement. So it's a time of year you might come to know as being very busy, very vibrant, having a lot of opportunities come for you and a lot of excitement, a lot of adventure, a lot of writing, teaching, publishing. Um, all kinds of things that, um, you know, have to do with your expression and expanding horizons. This is also a time when the planets start to move into Capricorn. And this is the time to hem in the party and get down to business. So you're going to have both of those energies be really strong this month. And so it's kind of like a grounding force where it can help you to take all of this inspiration that comes from these Sag placements and ground them into the Capricorn strategy using this amazing open window we have free from personal planet retrogrades. So I have a very nice in-depth detailed report for you as always. I am going to show you the charts. I've got bullet points of the houses or fields of experience that are brought up for all of the different spectrum of the Aries placements so that you can know what you're in for as far as what's going to come into the forefront, um, the knocking, you know, um, into your experience. And before we do that, we have to cover three very important points about why December is so important and what is going on in December. We have a major month here besides Jupiter going into Capricorn, which by the way, I will do a separate Jupiter in Capricorn for each sign series. Usually I will cover that in the report, but I'm doing that as a separate series. So just kind of be looking out for that and I will add it to my playlists. So be looking out, I'll, I'm making playlists now. So you'll have a whole Aries playlist. So you have a whole you know, chunk of info that will give you more and more and more information about how to best use the time or that period of time and the opportunities. But in any case, so the first thing I'm gonna do is talk about these three top things for December, because those are going to flavor and frame the airy specific things we talk about. Okay, so I'm going to give you this quick overview of the general energy of December 2019. And it's really critical to understand this before we start putting in the pieces for your sign, because it will flavor the whole month and everything that we talk about that's specific for you is going to have these three big uh, pieces that are just overlaying everything. Okay, so there are three main things to know about December 2019. The first is that we have way more sweet aspects than salty ones. This happened also in November. It definitely flavors the month when there are more sweet aspects than challenging ones. You know, your individual chart could vary because you could have a challenging time going on in your chart and then the general horoscopes could be like super sweet and you could be like well the horoscopes are wrong and they're not the general horoscopes your personal charts are all individual pieces of a very complex total picture but just talking about the general transits there's definitely more sweetness this month than there is um salty stuff going on and I will give you the dates for those sweet and salty aspects. Um, big thing to know about this month, time to get it done. December 9th is when the post Mercury retrograde transit, uh, Mercury went direct on November 20th, but every day after November 20th until December 9th was this kind of Mercury waking up, changing directions. I kind of see this as like making a U-turn. You know, if you're facing one, going one direction, you have to slow down, come to a stop, make the turn, go speed up again, okay? So this period of time between November 20th and December 9th is like coming back up to speed, all right? But from December 9th through February 2nd is the last major open window of all of 2020. 2020 is a year that is entrenched with inward and backward energy from personal planet retrogrades. Mercury, Venus, Mars, all going to be going retrograde. Mercury will be going retrograde three times as usual. And this is just going to be a very internal with themes from the past type of year. So your time to like push things out in a big way is December and January. And you've got awesome aspects this month to do it. There's a massive Capricorn influence, which is also helpful here because there are just so many planets in Capricorn, outer planets, the ones furthest from us, inner planets, the ones closest to us. So it's a time to strategize, get things done, get organized, make plans, you know, just like really take the bull by the horns and to, to do things. Um, there's also the Sagittarius influence, which is going to make a dizzying, busy, you know, all over the place, spiral spinning out, um, exuberant type of energy, which is really nice as a counterbalance to this very serious um 
Capricorn energy. So we do have those Sag influences, and those are going to be coming in in a big way, bringing some lightheartedness and optimism and fun to this um, otherwise very, you know, focused um, time. The third thing to know is that the eclipse energies are really, really happening now. Okay, I've been talking about these for months before they actually happened because they can actually show up as major manifestations in months before they happen. But this month we have the December eclipse, which is December 25th or 26th, depending on your time zone. Um, but the whole month, you know, and before December even and after December, major changes. So to see how this is going to affect your sign, very specifically with great detail, watch my November report for your sign. Okay, because in there, I talk about all of the details of exactly where you are on the spectrum for your sign um, and how that will manifest for you. I did a whole separate video series, a whole 12 set separate video series for the January eclipses. So look for that, you know, look for your sign, lunar eclipse 2020, um, Annie Botticelli, and you will find these very detailed uh, storylines of how you are very likely going to experience those eclipses, what areas of life are going to be highlighted for you. Okay, now the last thing I want to do here before we get into more specifics with your sign has to do with the sweet and salty dates. Okay, so the sweet aspects, 2nd, 3rd, 8th, 10th, 13th, oh, 10th, 11th, 13th, 15th, 19th, 21st, 22nd, 24th, 26th, and 27th. And I've got them written down here. Okay, the salty ones, 8th, 11th, 13th, 19th, 22nd, 23rd, and 26th. You'll notice some of these are in common. So there are many days this month that there are sweet and salty aspects on the same days, okay? So you can either, you know, try to align your things with the days that don't have those <laughs> same things going on, or you can just feel your way through. An aspect happens on a certain day, but our timeline for how we can experience it can be days before or days after. So you just have to kind of feel your way through. If you're like planning a big launch and you're having a crappy day and it's just not, things aren't flowing, Maybe wait until everything feels like, okay, one, two, three, now, sync up, you know? It's really important for you to learn to feel these rhythms for yourself. I teach you this and give you guidelines, but your feeling your way through is my main goal. Okay, so those are the aspects to note. Now, let's look at these juicy details about how your sign-specific energies are going to show up. So now that you have all the goods about why December is important, what you can do with it, and... Um, and what the general tone is, let's talk about some area specific things. So the first thing to know, even though a lot of the things I talk about will be true for all Aries placements, and I um, have a middle degree Aries rising, so I'm along with you when I do these reports, it will be good to know where in the Aries spectrum you are because there are going to be certain differences depending on where you're at. So early degree Aries are basically our March born or zero to nine degrees, middle around April 1st through 10th or 10 to 19 degrees, and late around April 11th through the rest of the sign or 20 to 29 degrees. And as I said, if you're watching for, you know, your moon or your sun or your rising, this is for you. This is equally for you because the sun chart, the moon chart, the rising chart are all windows out of our experience that show us different things that are happening at the same time that are true at the same time. So there are multiple layers to the astrological picture for you. All right, so the first thing that I wanna talk about, I'm gonna use the late degree chart, but I'm talking about this for all Aries placements unless I otherwise specify, is what the personal planets are doing. And why we care about what the personal planets are doing is because they're the ones closest to us. So when we look at a monthly horoscope, you know, we're, the things that are changing the most month to month are these personal planets, Mars, Mercury, the Sun, Venus. So where these planets are, what sign they're in, what angles they're making to our placements, what houses or fields of experience they're moving through, those are going to be showing us what kinds of things are going to be coming up for us, what kind of themes, what kind of opportunities. These other planets, you know, this is always called it like a running track through the sky. So these other planets, like the moon, sails through here. This is like the young athlete going through the running track. And then these guys, these are the the older older friends. Maybe someone had a hip replacement, somebody's just, you know, recovering from something else. This is, you know, these outer planets, they take a really long time. Like Pluto over here takes like 240 years to move around the running track. So the 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 chart is a snapshot of where all the planets are in the sky 
and then we fill in kind of the rate that they're moving at so that we can see where, you know, what the relevance is going to be. But those outer planets take so long to move that month to month, they're pretty much in the same place. So that's why we focus on these personal planets, okay? So there is still Scorpio energy. Scorpio makes an awkward one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's 360 degrees in a circle. There are 12 signs. I'm not going to write them all at 12. So 360 divided by the 12 zodiac signs is 30 degrees in each sign. So for each sign there is between us and something else that has a flavor. So a, a 150 degree angle is very awkward. So when the planets get into Scorpio, Aries energy has some parts that are a little bit simpatico with them because um, Mars rules Scorpio and Aries. So there's like a similar kind of angst and edge and kind of like motivation. That's the only place that they match. Everything else is really awkward because Scorpio energy is super emotional and Aries energy, the emotion is do it now, get aggravated that it's not done now, <laughs> be inspired and excited or, you know, mad that things aren't happening fast enough. You know, there's like a more narrow emotional range with the Aries things going on. And Scorpio is just like this whole abyss of emotion and Aries energy is action oriented. So when we have planets in Scorpio and they have been October, November, and now at least it's just lingering now and it will just be at the beginning of the month, but we still do have a little bit of that awkwardness where emotion has to be factored in. Could, you know, whether it's our emotions or other people's emotions, sometimes this manifests through like people melting down around you, you know, and unless you have some other placements that make you more patient with this, Aries energy on its own, you know, would say, pull it together. Like, you know, get over it, get on with your life. You know, that's like the Aries thing. Like, it's fine. Just keep going. You know, what, what are you crying about? Right? So unless you have other things about your chart that make you more of, you know, feeling your way through life, this Aries energy mixing with the Scorpio is really awkward. So you've got a little bit of that left. But then these planets that are in Scorpio are going to go into Sag. And what I was talking about before that and then the sun are all going to make these beautiful 120 degree angles with Aries placements. And that is wonderful. It's inspiring. It's uplifting. It's exciting. It brings, um, you know, writing and publishing and speaking and, you know, travel and adventure and expanded horizons and church or spiritual work, solutions, excitement, um, busyness. All of that is going to be just coming through and smooching and blessing your Aries placement. So we have a lot of that going on and more of it coming. Then as the planets get into Capricorn, so Venus is there and then the sun will get there towards the end of the month. Eventually these guys will get there, but not, not this month. So that Capricorn energy makes a one, two, three. That's a 90 degree angle. Okay. So 90 degree angles are the angles of pressure. So cap energies in general kind of put pressure on everybody because they want you to strategize, to get organized, to, you know, figure out what you're doing. And in general, Aries can kind of resonate with that because they're both cardinal signs. So Aries and cap, they're both ones that rule the seasonal changes. Okay. So when the seasons change, these planets or these signs that are on those cusps of the seasonal changes are cardinal. They instigate things. So again, there's like a match there where it's like, okay, time for action, time to do things, but it may require some tedium, you know, like some very tedious tasks that Aries might not want to slow down long enough to do. One such task is taxes. I always work on my taxes when the planets start to get into Capricorn because when the planets are in Aquarius, when the planets are in Pisces, you know, and then before you know it, tax time is there and the planets start to get in Aries and you're like, okay, maybe I can have this motivation now. It's like at the end of it, of like, we have to get it done. But this Capricorn energy is amazing for doing tedious things like taxes and you can get a leg up on those things. So like anything that requires some kind of strategy or organization or sitting down and making a plan before you act, like the plan before you act, that's kind of where these differ. Capricorn energy is not very impulsive. It makes a plan and then it takes action on it. But Aries energy just kind of does it, right? So this is like this blending of a perfect plan coming together, a perfect strategy coming together, taking the time, just a few minutes to do it so that it can go um, more smoothly. And then this, um, this Venus is going to get like for, um, 
Okay, yeah, actually, we're not going to talk about that yet. So let's talk about the fields of experience that are going to be accentuated for each of you. And these are the arenas of life that get lit up and, and you know, given charge by as the planets move through. So for the early degree, the 10th, the 9th, and the 8th, 8, 9, 10, early... I'm going to go in and give you bullet points as to what types of things come up and some other details about what you can expect with these um, areas being highlighted, but I just want to show you where everybody is in it. That was late. Okay, so that's middle. You can see 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. Okay. And then the late degree chart. I have so many things over here, it's hard for me to keep track of everything. Okay. There we go. So if you're later in the sign, you really have the 7th, 8th, and 9th. And that 10th house stuff is not really going to be showing up as much for you until the end of the month or into January. People later in the sign, everything drops back. So the things that the earlies are like, okay, this is current for me now. The middles may be there, but the lates takes a little bit longer to get there. Okay, let's first talk about the fields of experience that are accentuated for all of you. All right, so that's going to be the eighth house. Ooh, where are you, buddy? There we go. All right, so the kinds of things that come up with the eighth house, this is the house of other people's money and shared resources. So, you know, anything having to do with family money, inheritances, um, legacy planning, like making your will. This is an amazing month through the different combinations of energy to think about that type of thing. Life insurance, um, you know, health insurance, anything like that. Capital getting money. Oh, it's an amazing time to borrow money. It's an amazing time to get loans and capital to buy houses, to sell houses. Um, and it's a good time to play the lotto. If you have some extra money, don't, you know, put yourself in a bad situation about it. But taxes, legacy, loans, debt, credit, all of that are really strongly accentuated at this time. And because of the clear planets or the clear, um, yeah, not personal planets not being in retrograde, um, there's really, you know, good new beginnings here. And this also rules the energies of intimacy and sex and marriage and like the deep inner world. So, you know, very important people. I call them POCs, people of consequence, may come into your life or new chapters or deeper chapters with current people that you're already in relationship with. Psychology, parapsychology, inner work, you know, anything esoteric with the mystery schools or just like a good mystery book may come up at this time. You know, just wanting to go deeper, wanting to see what makes people tick, wanting to see the unseen realms. The unseen realms come up in big ways when this is accentuated. So all early, middle, and late degree placements are going to have that. All early, middle, and late degree placements are also going to have these Sag things going on. So I've mentioned before, you know, this teaching energy is really coming up really strongly for Aries, especially as Jupiter had moved through Sagittarius. This has been a long-term theme. If you want to publish a book, if you're writing a book, if you're making an anything about teaching, speaking, learning, perfect education programs. So the combination of the learning with the eighth house stuff could mean you could get money you need for school or something like that and adventure. So you might have an adventure, a surprise adventure come to you. And it's also a great time to plan an adventure or travel or to take trips. Speaking, learning different languages, international connections of any different kinds, expanding your horizons in any way and having optimism and seeing the light and also um, framing things for the positive church and spiritual things may come up, you know, where you have opportunities to teach the things that are important to you or that come up with your church. One of the biggest things I like about the ninth house has to do with solutions, finding solutions. So as the ninth house is coming up, it makes me think about those times in the day when we are most connected to our subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind is the sleeping giant of our experience. Everything is manifesting. We have a small percentage of consciousness that it's, things are manifesting from, but most of it's the programs of the unconscious, the subconscious mind. And we have direct access to the subconscious mind twice a day. Those few minutes when you're drifting off to sleep and those few minutes when you're waking up and you're like, I got to get up. I don't want to get up, but I'm kind of in my dream state, but I'm kind of awake. Those few minutes are the most powerful in the whole day. 
Do your affirmations then, do your EFT tapping then, ask your subconscious mind questions. As you're drifting off to sleep, ask your subconscious mind to give you a solution. This is back to solutions. So finding answers, see, making connections in your mind, you know, having things pop in like awarenesses. I can't tell you how many just things I've solved by using those few minutes um, before and after. So it's basically getting yourself in a theta state. Theta is that magical um, hypnotic manifestation connection to our subconscious mind. And we're naturally in theta when we're falling asleep or when we're waking up. And of course, you can use things like subliminals. I have amazing subliminal library um, called Train Your Brain um, that you can see at AnnieHelpsYou.com and then click on Train Your Brain. But subliminal programming is an amazing way to find solutions. But any which way you do it, use those minutes, use the, those periods of time. You could be working for 10 years on something and like working hard, working hard, plugging away. And then in the five minutes before you go to sleep, you could be making more headway than in all that time. That is the power of the subconscious mind. So we, I want you to definitely really pay attention to that this month as this ninth house is accentuated for you. Okay. So for the early and middle degree placements and coming soon for late degree. Okay. So I want you late friends. Don't gloss over and not pay attention. Where's my little thing here? Goodness. I can't find it now. How could that happen? All right. Well, I'll just tell you. So the 10th house that is coming into the forefront for early middle and coming like towards the end of the month and into January for your late degree placements has to do with work and career. We already have a lot of work and career changes coming for many of you if they haven't already been implemented because of the eclipses. And definitely look at my eclipse reports, my January eclipse report for Aries. Watch my November report, which has the December eclipse report for Aries within that monthly. Um, but work, career, things with fathers. Dads for Aries are going to come into the picture. Maybe they need help. Maybe they need you. Maybe they can help you. Maybe there's a healing or a conflict or something going on. Father figures are going to come up in a big way. Um, bosses, authority figures, you know, things with the law, things like that also may be relevant. And for those of you who don't need to make money or aren't in the workforce, your place out in the world can be brought up by all of this Capricorn energy. So this has to do with you just like being out there and doing what you're supposed to do and showing up in the world with your gifts or whatever you're supposed to do, which may or may not have anything to do with making money. Okay. And then the middle and late degree placements, you still have some seventh house things going on early. If you're watching this in November, you have this going on now, but once it's December, that's passed for you. And the, um, the early and Okay, so the middle and late are going to have this very current in December. And this has to do with relationships. Okay, so the eighth house we talked about already, that's another relationship house, but those are the deeper relationships. It's like relationships with resources, you and your money and someone else and their money or something like that. But the seventh house that's being accentuated for middle and late, this is just relationships, the relationship to relationships. So finding key practitioners, you know, doing um, even aesthetics, Libra rules, the, um, the energy of aesthetics and design agreements, you know, making, um, making plans or agreements or connections with people, new people coming in. Like if you need a gardener or if you need an employee, or if you're looking for more business, more clients, Anything like that is very accentuated now. And trying to get new clients, this is a time where you really want to put your, your push out to do new things, get your new clients, because as the retrograde energies come in starting in February, it's going to be more about going to people and things from the past. So you want to bulk up your client base or your relationship, new, you know, new relationships as much as possible so you have more in your base to go over all the retrogrades with. Okay, so these are the things most on my mind. In general, as um, an Aries, important Aries placement, I am very excited about this month. I know that the eclipses may bring some drama and challenges for us, but at the same time, um, there are so many opportunities that we have to let creativity and solution-mindedness burn bright and to also have a lot of fun and adventure and also have um, answers pop up for things that we've been looking for and also to be able to make some plans. Of course, the eclipses may shift those around a little bit, but um, in general, I, I like the energies a lot to ground in manifest manifesting the things that we're working on and even things we might not even know we were working on that may just gel in a wonderful way. So definitely go to my website, anniehelpsyou.com. 
so that you can sign up for my free email newsletter. And when you do, you will get, remember those dates I gave you, the sweet ones and the salty ones? Well, I give a write-up for my email list, special for them, every month, a month early, all the sweet dates, all the salty dates, what aspects they are, what planets are involved, what signs are involved, and what you can expect from those combinations, plus a little general overview written of the month. You get that delivered to your inbox every month, a month early, when you go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and sign up for my free email newsletter. It will look like this. And you will also get my 28-day virtual coaching program called Shine for Free when you sign up there, plus other free goodies. If you love how I teach and you want to learn, I'm an astrology teacher, that is my main focus, you at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Besides seeing a massive amount of astrology and other blogs on that site, you can see my astrology apprenticeship program. And if you want to learn how to be an astrologer and make money doing that, I can teach you how to do that. I have people often coming out of my course, even before the course is done, already earning money as an astrologer. So massively comprehensive. If you think my videos are detailed, you should see my astrology apprenticeship program. So you can see that at AnnieHelpsYou.com. And for written horoscopes by me, a month early, and lifestyle blogs, including an astrology for wellness blog that is massively, again, comprehensive, go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com. And these links that I'm giving you are all in the notes underneath the video. So if you click on more, then it will be there and you can just link straight through. CozyBySweetStarlight.com, lots of, it's such a beautiful site. Just go there even just to see how pretty it is. <laughs> and the last thing, Get my book, Radical Prayer, Transform Your Life in the World in 28 Days with amazing, powerful, radical prayers, mantras, affirmations that will help you claim the life of your dreams. You can get that on Amazon. You can search for Radical Prayer, Annie, and you'll find it. Or you can go to RadicalPrayerBook.com. It's an amazing handbook for my fellow spiritual seekers. My husband, B.R. Newman, also has all kinds of goodies, offerings, new things all the time at his website. I am Helios.com. I A M H E L I O S.com. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.